Hi, I'm Corbin Coyes, the Vice President of Engineering for Q2 ALS for North America. And today I'll be talking about the horizontal valve system, improving sucker rod pump efficiencies and decreasing failure frequencies in high angle well bores. First, we need to stabilize the flow when we're pumping into the curve. So for fluid flow behavior in the past, it was unstable, erratic, and it increased pressure drop. Now with vortex flow, it decreases pressure drop, increases flow, and extends our run life of downhole rod pumps. The next evolution of vortex flow is the HVS system. So the geometry has a tapered seat to seal at the bottom. Two balls are joined by a connecting stem. It uses hydrostatic force and the fluid column, and it also has an actuation where it's low pressure, high pressure valve system that automatically seals at 90 degrees. And with the hydrostatic as well, the fulcrum pushes up the tapered seal. The laboratory testing we did was very extensive. So we did one with 90 degrees in the vertical. We had LED lights, lasers, and we had different flow rates on the, in the laboratory testing apparatus. And then we lifted it up to be at 60 degrees horizontal, which is what some of the operators in the field are doing right now. To further understand our downhole properties, we injected nanobubbles, so small gas molecules that are representative at very small diameters downhole. We wanted to see on surface how they behave in the vortex fluid flow and also to be a visual tracer for our lasers that we used in the lab. The methodology was about 170 hours of experimentation in a controlled environment. We used reverse osmosis and then we injected air, nanobubbles, guar, and frac sand. And we changed the angle from 90 degrees to 60 degrees to look at how far that vortex lasts in the acrylic pipe. So it was a visual and a quantitative result. So first we looked at before and after, steady state observation. Then we tested with a variety of media. With the steady state, we found that the vortex decreases the pressure drop quite a bit after the valve. With the media, we tested different rates of flow and we used guar to change the Newtonian fluid concentration to maybe a non-Newtonian with carrying capacity to hold the frac sand. For the reciprocation piece of it, to simulate downhole rod pumps, we had before and after results with a bell curve at a V max equal to pi times V average. We accelerated and deaccelerated the flow to understand how this thing actually works downhole. We also did pressure sensors on the top and the bottom, and these pressure sensors were measuring pressure every second. So with that, we looked at pressure, pressure difference standard deviation, which has not been done too much in the past. With the visual part of it, the quantitative piece was really exciting. We saw a visual sinusoidal wave that decreased the friction of the fluid on the boundary condition wall and increased the kinetic energy through the center line of the tube. The self-closing valve was another aha moment where we found that you don't necessarily need hydrostatic to close our HVS valve. Our HVS valve acts like a pneumatic valve where there's a high pressure, low pressure seal so theoretically and actually practically, we saw this thing close upside down past 90 degrees. Then we get to the macro field study we did. We have over a thousand of these run over the last two years. Out of all of these wells, we had a company called Enbrus, a public data company, combined with our tracking, mech, our tracking system. And with the two different systems, we were able to look at all of these wells, normalize them to have before and after production values, and with that, we found that 47% of these HVS valves increased production. So that's pretty impressive since we're in a declining reservoir in all of these wells. Then we go to the macro field data analysis. So we started in the Bakken with the company, and then from there, they had uh, thousands of wells. Then we went and narrowed in to the HVS valves, the high, that's the horizontal valve system for Q2. And with those, we had certain parameters like TVDs of 5,300, they all were landed around between 60 and 70 degrees. Uh, the average dog legs was 4.3 degrees. And um, so we studied the wells themselves. Out of those wells, there was 90 wells that came out with before and after production. And on average, the increased fluid production was 32% on a declining reservoir. 14 wells, however, were lowered another 20, 222 lengths down the hole 
And since they were lowered with a higher fluid column on top, those 14 wells saw a 143% increase in oil production by using the HVS valve. The remaining 76 wells uh, were increased by 14%. So on average, we were around 32% for those 90 wells in southeast Saskatchewan, and they were Bakken wells. Then we look at the failure frequency part of this. With the failure frequency, the interesting thing is once you get a pump that seals properly and has 99% fillage, your fluid pound doesn't affect your rods up on surface, you have uh, less cavitation in your pumps, you also get smoother flow that actually cleans your solids pretty consistently through your valve. So on average, the failure frequency decreased by 26% on average for those wells in that area. So as for conclusions, under the laboratory conclusions, we validated the efficient low friction vortex fluid flow behavior. The final run of experimentation, 33% fraction was added and it was suspended at the 70 degree angle. The fluid flow went through the HVS valve and disappeared into the vortex. So we know we can handle a lot of solids through this HVS pump. From the field conclusions, we increased the daily average in production and pump efficiency. The 14 wells that were lowered saw that 143% pump increase. So we know if we lower this pump down to 90 degrees, you're gonna get more fluid level on your traveling and standing valve, and you're just gonna escape some of the gas and you're gonna get lots more fluid head to your pump. So that's the primary reason why this works. And all wells had a 35% um, reduction in failures. That was the macro study. The, mac the micro study was about 26%. But uh, when it comes down to the failure frequencies, we got that data from the operator and they supplied that information to us. So that was great to have some failure frequency data on the HVS valve. And that's it for me today. If you want any, any to reach out and talk more about the science, I love talking about it. I love talking about the technology. We have a full scale lab. That's pretty fun if you want to come have a look at that too as well. And we continue to evolve this world. We're in a new paradigm between 45 and 90 degrees and this is the first time production engineering has really been able to lower these pumps because most of the wells out there are horizontal and we're finally able to get that last bit of oil out of the ground and uh, oil companies are, are really ecstatic to, to see this new pump system work. One more thing I have to add too is that not just the HVS valve, you have to engineer above and below the valve. One for strength, for weight, for guiding, for solids, for sand, for corrosion. So this is one piece of it, but the whole system itself is about 15, 16 pieces. And also startup procedures as well as POCs are really important to keep an eye on because you are in that angled part of the wellbore. So a good software and a good technology to get your pump off controller on surface is necessary as well. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon.